Okay, all you DIY teardrop campers, if you have built your trailer and you're trying to get a VIN number on it so you can get it tagged, I'm gonna show you what I had to go through in the state of Alabama. All right, so Michelle went down to our local county courthouse and she tried to explain to the lady what we had done and what we're trying to do. So she handed back to her INV form 26 TAC 3. It's an application for an Alabama VIN number. So when she brought this home, kind of read through the directions. Um, this was an assembled. The lady wanted to know at least the color of the camper even though none of this other stuff applied. So we had to put in our name, our address, phone number, city, state, zip. There was no lien holder, so we left that blank. And that it was assembled by us at our address and completed on our date and the location for the vehicle at the inspection. Also, we had to sign it, date it, and get that notarized. <clears throat> Michelle took that back up to the courthouse and uh, the courthouse sent it off to Montgomery. And she didn't, she's waving her head now. What happened, Michelle? We mailed it off. We mailed it off, okay. So then we mailed it off to the uh, courthouse up in uh, Montgomery. Okay. We didn't hear back from them for several weeks. And then our application came back to us in the mail with some additional requested information. Um, they wanted pictures, and what else did they want, Michelle? A letter. A, a notarized letter mm -hmm. saying that we had built this uh, camper ourselves. Because we built the frame. Yeah, and, um, all, and they wanted proof that we had paid taxes on the materials that we built it with. So we had to also uh, take our receipts and Xerox all of our receipts, not all of them. They just wanted the majority. Just the maj yeah, that major receipts. So we sent them the metal. We sent them some of the uh, the plywood uh, bill, the red, the Western Red Cedar, some of the more expensive materials that we built the camper with. So we made probably a copy of about 10 receipts and we included that back. And I also included, um, not at this time, never mind. So we sent that back and then it came back to us the uh, county courthouse contacted and said, Montgomery is uh, requesting additional information. They'd like pictures. Um, so the lady in Montgomery contacted me directly because my, my telephone number was on there. She says, you know, what color is this thing? So uh, I told her, I was like, well, the trailer is black. She goes, no, but you said it was built out of wood. And I said, well, yes, ma'am, it's built out of wood. And she said, well, no, what kind of finish it had on it? She goes, okay, so it's a brown trailer. I said, yes, ma'am, if you want to put brown, that's fine. It is a brown trailer due to it being built out of wood. And uh, she says, well, we'd like to have some pictures inside and out and uh, kind of give us an idea of what you have here. So we took probably seven pictures I attached it to an email. I also sent them a link to our YouTube channel uh, playlist with all of our trailer build in it. And that's not anything that you have to do. That's something additional that I, that I did. And then she called me right back. She goes, wow, that was more than we had expected. She said, that's very nice. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and process your application. We're gonna send this down to your local inspector and our local inspector is 70 miles away down in Mobile. So uh, the following week, the mobile inspector called me up. She says, hey, uh, the only day I'm doing this is on Tuesdays, and we need to schedule you to come down and do it. I said, okay, Tuesday's fine. I can take off work for Tuesday and uh, bring the camper down. He's like, what time do you think you'll be here? So I told him, I said, early morning. We'd like to go ahead and get it done early morning so we can get back and get some stuff done. So uh, we are on our way down there in just a few minutes to take our tra trailer to go get inspected. So that's where we are in this process. I asked him, I said, is there any additional information that I need to prepare or bring? He goes, nope, we're just gonna put the VIN number on there, that's it. I said, so you're not gonna be inspecting the trailer for welds or brake lights or any of that stuff? He goes, nope. I said, okay. So we're gonna go down there and we're gonna see what he does and we're gonna kind of bring you along too. 
Boy, how long have you been building trailers? Yes, sir, this is the first uh, trailer I ever built. Well, you mean this is your first time? You know how many trailers we see up here? And every one of them, there's something wrong with. Everything you did, you did right under this. You got all these bolts going through tabs, or dedicated tabs to bolt through, and nothing went through the rails to, uh, to compromise the integrity of the frame. I wish everybody knew how to do that. Well, thank you, sir. I, I tried to, uh, to go by what made sense, not ruining the integrity of the frame whenever I was bolting it all together. I sure do appreciate the compliments. The only thing I can see is you might need a little zip tie to hold up the front of this trailer cable here. But other than that, it looks good. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Yes, sir, I, I thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, one of the things we forgot to discuss with you is the matter of weight tickets. Um, we knew that in order to get uh, a title done on the trailer, we had to have weight tickets to submit along with the application that we showed you earlier in the video. We went to our local Cat Scales weigh station up at the interstate where they weigh the, the semi-trailers. Um, and we parked our camper on the weigh scales. And they, they're different pads. You have one pad just for the front axle of the tractor, then you have a pad for the back axles of the tractor, then you have a pad for the trailer itself. So there are different sections in a set of scales. And we just pulled the trailer on one of those little pads, unhooked from it, and drove off the scales, and then asked the, uh, the scale attendant to uh, take the measurement. It came up to 1,420 pounds just on that one one set of scales so we printed that off now keep in mind I'm you know being prior military we always had to have a, um, an empty weight and a reweigh whenever you're uh, loaded out but in order to do this application you only need one way so you don't have to pay the extra three dollars and go back and, and do another uh, way fee you can go in get your one ticket and you're done as long as it says what the total weight of that trailer is whether it's the drive shaft location or the uh, steering axle location or the, the trailer location. Just make sure that you put your trailer on just one of those pads and get your ticket and submit along with the application. Um, now one of the things I want to know whenever, oh, the tongue weight, you got to have the tongue weight. Um, and this is how you get the tongue weight. You just take your, your bathroom scales and you put a board across it so that you evenly distribute the weight. You put your jack down on the board, and uh, when we did that, our tongue weight just on the jack scan, uh, jack uh, stand, came out to 180 pounds over a 1,420 pound trailer. That is proportionally correct. So we knew that we were right where we wanted to be as far as the scales. So I just want to show that to you that that's how you get the tongue weight of the trailer as you use the bathroom scales and you just kind of pick it up and put it on there it really wasn't all that heavy or you could just flip it down on there and then disconnect it from your trailer however you want to do it but 180 pounds on an axle it, it, it really wasn't too much just to pick up myself and, and place on there now after we left the VIN inspection down in Mobile we decided to go ahead and head back to the courthouse now, we knew we were able to go ahead and get a tag on it today because while we were there, the inspection officer said they no longer mail off the inspection back to uh, the Capitol. They scan everything right into the system right then. So he said he was going right back in, scan it all into the system, and it will be in the system so we could go right to our courthouse and they could pull it up and see the, uh, the VIN application was already done. And he went ahead and did the title application while he was there. So we drove uh, back to our county courthouse here. We went in, we told the lady, and also uh, reminded, reminded her, because we've been in contact with the lady all along, that we had already paid sales tax. It's something else, isn't it? 
that we had already paid sales tax on all the parts to build the trailer to ensure that they didn't uh, get us for um, sales tax. The only thing they hit us for was the application fee. Um, so we paid $100 today, got our tag, our permanent tag, and we went ahead and asked her, I said, what's the yearly renewal on this? And she said, you know, based on the value of the trailer being at $4,500 in the state of Alabama, we're looking at about $170 a year to renew the tags on our trailer. I think that's a bit much. I think other people are out there getting away with it a lot cheaper. And it's because of the value of the trailer because she was able to pull up uh, the value at $4,500. She based the, uh, the, the title off of that. So that might be something to consider whenever you're considering the cost of a, of a build-it-yourself trailer or you're just gonna go pick up a trailer you know, that's only worth $1,000 and then uh, title that that already has a VIN number. So you kind of keep that in the back of your mind when you're deciding to do your build. So um, there's one other thing. Oh, the, the, the value of the trailer. Now how she got the value of the trailer is when she, she called me around behind the counter into her little office and she said, okay, based on what I have in the system, we've got a little guy Mini, I said, yeah, the, the camper is pretty close to that. She clicked in there. She saw the value was about $4,500. I said, that's about how much we spent on the parts to build our camper was about $4,500. So she selected that. She didn't title it as a, uh, a Mini, but she selected it for the value, then went in and retitled it just Teardrop. So I thought that was a, a pretty neat way of doing it. Now, the purpose of this video is to, to help any of you guys that are in our area title and uh, some points to consider whenever you're doing a build. Now this is based solely on the state of Alabama and uh, I would asked several people in my state and most people seemed that they had went and bought their trailers and did their teardrop build. And uh, I couldn't find anybody that had built their trailer and went through the process. So we were just going to document it for a future reference. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy the film, and thanks for watching. Okay, everybody, we've got our VIN number. Alabama went away from doing the metal plates where they tack on to the frame somewhere. The police officer told me they do labels now and they put it on the on the frame itself somewhere he said also stamp the VIN number in a location that only you know where it's at so that way if the trailer is stolen you can give that VIN location to the cop and the cop can look and identify it and that way only two people you and the cop will know where that VIN number is at so that's one of the things I took away from that inspection uh, Officer Davis was really nice and uh, he had nothing but great things to say about this build and he kind of discussed some of the things that he had seen in the past and troubles to run into but we took no hits on this inspection everything passed uh, according to uh, what he was checking and uh, it was a good experience and hopefully this information will help you whenever you get ready to uh, get a VIN and tag 